Okay, weirdly enough, the last time I made one of these short videos, it was extremely successful for whatever the heck reason. They got a PV PV 8.5C. It's a commercial audio amplifier. I think they're about what 275, 300 watts a channel. Um, basically, troubleshooting it very quickly. You've got your power supply, and you got some preamp driver boards and all that stuff. Um, and it's all sort of powered separately, so it was very easy to figure out that this channel's uh, power transformers or trans transistors are all shorted out. Um, so we got a big short inside. Now, what's crazy? I don't know why did why did uh, it's like I swear the guy who sent this to the music store to be looked at already knew this. See, we have technician doodling there. We have. The word short written right there in crappy marker. And then we have like markings for R and Y, which would be like red and yellow. So the guy knew where to put the wires back. So somebody's already been here and diagnosed this. It still looks like the original transistors. But, okay. So, what is this camera? This camera's like insistent on being very zoomed in. But, um,. I mean, it's very possible to fix this. You can get compatible transistors. You might have to go the NTE route. Um, when I looked for these particular transistors, there's eight of them, four of each type. They're complementary pairs um, on this channel. They're the genuine PV part ones, which are actually Motorola or on semis. They're um, like fifteen dollars a piece, like twelve, thirteen, fourteen dollars, something like that. Um, the actual same part number is generally discontinued all over the place. Of course, there's some on eBay coming directly from China. You want to trust those? Or there's the NTE version. So unfortunately, these little buggers are ten, eleven, twelve dollars a piece. So times eight, you know, we're looking at probably over a hundred dollars just for the transistors and you know lord knows what else we got to deal with um so on stuff like this i always just look it up on reverb or something like that and see what the going is on it and uh, these things are bringing i think like 175 is the least expensive one that works i guess i've seen you know 200 250 something like that so it yeah this is one that uh i don't know if buddy's going to be eager to get this repaired or not i'm going to think probably not okay so back to this pv and i pulled all of the blowed up transistors out of the blowed up side and uh you can see here you know like i say somebody was hidden here before and they marked a few things and took some notes and that kind of thing. Um, they marked 4, 7, and 4, 8, which those numbers don't jive with me. This does have the original PV part number, 704-318-0, oh, I believe. And then the other one is 704-8318, oh, whatever. Um, I'll pull up the document and show you. There's these are these are PV part numbers. They're not a general. There's there's one that's not shorted. These two were shorted. Those six are not. So there's see that is uh seven oh four eight three one eight zero and then the other one should have a seven instead of the eight. Let's find one with a lot with less bird poo on it. Seven oh four seven three one eight zero. Um, so anyway, I found a document on EL84 World, which is a cool site that gives you the um, standard part number or the Motorola, which is now on semi, the generic part number, if you will, and that will enable you to cross-reference it. The other thing that's interesting as well, tooling through this, you can see one of the, the not .33 ohm. 5 watt resistors you can see you know one thing is different than the other that one that's marked DAE rather than uh, uh, Mexico Dale you know like the rest of them are that one is the one that's blown so that was probably a replacement 
So I'm wondering if this failed complimentary pair was an eBay special because this part's been discontinued for a while. Maybe they got them straight from PV. I don't know. But um, I've tried to test all the other pieces, parts on this board and everything seems to match. And of course, since this is a left channel, right channel, I can kind of just, you know, test and see if I get a reading that looks weird on this side, I can, you know, match it and see if I get the same weird reading over here. And uh, I think that that's our main problem. And then I have an outed resistor there um, that I need to deal with. And uh, I'm going to change the lot of the transistors because this particular original replacement part isn't available. I have got something that looks identical on the spec sheet. Um, it should be an appropriate field replacement, but it helps to have them all sort of balanced. So if they came out of the same batch run line, you got a good shot. And the soup's ready, he said facetiously. That's the sound of my super solder sucker getting hot and telling me it's ready to start sucking. Okay, so I admit I didn't film any of it because it's trying to, for me, working on solid state equipment is like listening to a Ramon song. There's a whole lot of I don't want us happening the whole time you're working. Um, and my dyslexia gets the best of me. So this top row are the NPNs. So 704-83180 is NPN. The, N the NTE equivalent is NTE388. I know some people are going to be like, NTE? Oh man, why didn't you go? You can get the Motorola's or the or the on semis, uh, yeah, at eBay or AliExpress. It's really lucky. So I wanted to make sure they were new. There are people selling used ones. And what's funny is the ones on this channel are all marked as like 1993. The ones I pulled out of here were like marked as 98, 95. There were different. And the ones that blew up were the 95s. So, uh, yeah. Uh, the spec sheet for the NTE complement. So we have NTE388, which is the NPN, and then the PNP would be the NTE68. Um, those uh, match up on the spec sheet precisely. And then we change the blown resistor, and just because I could, I changed those to 2.2 uh, microfarad capacitors. Okay, I am running it on a slightly you know, current restriction here, <clears throat> just to be safe in case anything blew up. But uh, yeah, nothing's getting hot and it will pass signal through both sides there. So it looks like we're good. Um, again, I did two capacitors for the fun of it, one resistor, and I did the set of uh, transistors on the one side. So I think we're fine. We're going to do a little bit more testing on it and button it up. Again, I'm sure y'all probably wanted to learn more about you know how we mount these. Um, uh, transistors and stuff like that. I'll tell you a little bit about it, but again, my dyslexia and my nerves and having to check everything 47 times because, you know, we have NPNs and PNPs and they all look alike and all of that kind of stuff. And especially because my new NTE transistors have a different number than the original Moto transistors. So I can't just, you know, line up, oh, well, this is a row of this one and this is a row of that one. I have to actually sort of, and I can understand why dude doodled on there with the marker, you know, to remind you, and don't make, don't make mistakes, but, uh, yeah. Okay, so no air lights, and we got music from both speakers. So this is just YouTube library stuff, because reasons. So there's, um... That one, that one speaker is kind of ratted out, but I checked both channels are playing clean. That speaker down there is just ratted, but yeah, the coil's fine. It's just the coil's a little, or the cone's a little ratty. So that's what you use to play Rumble by Link Ray or something, right? Oh, good. Now we got a commercial. So yeah, we're doing good. Both channels are working. Um, I didn't film in extreme depth with the solid state stuff, just probably because. I'm not as practiced in it. I know what I'm doing. I generally don't blow things up, but with the tube amps, I can probably laugh and joke with you because I can do it while I'm while I'm half paying attention. Um, on this solid state stuff, I do really try to pay full attention to it because 
if you flub up on a tube amp, you turn it on, the tube starts to red plate, and then you turn it off and fix it. If you do that kind of error on a solid state amp, especially something that's like 500 watts a channel like this, you screw up, you flip the switch, and there's a big cloud of smoke, and then you're out a hundred and some dollars of parts you paid okay, for. Okay, so this one's already got one stuck to it, but anyway, with these transistors, you're used to transistors having three legs, but if you look on the bottom, these have two. So the third leg is technically the case, and that connects the third leg through the screws there. And you have this spacer, they refer to it as a mica, I believe mica is a type of glass that was used uh, eons ago. I think this spacer is actually plastic. And then you have to put the white thermal compound, aka bird poop, that gets everywhere. See, it's already on my fingies. And you have to put that down on these. So there's just a lot of tedious work. You have to make sure that those screws are snug, but not too snug, because you don't want to crack the board. And then you got to get everything soldered on and you got to clean the bird poop and then you get bird poop on these legs and then they don't want to solder and you know stuff so you know mark your mark your work document your stuff check very carefully over and over and over again to make sure you know you got every shorted every bodged part out of there and you can be successful doing this kind of stuff thanks for watching have a great day